So hello, everyone. To stand by, we're just getting our um, interview interviewee to come over. I think they were on the other link. They should be here shortly. Uh, to stand by, we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. And usually much more people than this show up. So to stand by, and we will be starting shortly. Hey, Trevor, how are you, man? Did you say, did you call my name? I did, Trevor. How are you? <laughs> I am doing better than I can describe. This is great. Thank well, you for asking. Well, stand by and we'll be with you guys in a minute. In fact, here it's, comes the uh, present our, our, our interviewee now. Stand by. That's David. I didn't, I didn't see who was talking. That's David. What are you doing, man? Hey, David, it's Eric. I am here. Eric, apologies uh, for the wrong link being in your being delivered to you. Um, I think we all had to. Anyway, no problem. Go down that road. So what? <laughs> <laughs> so what? That's just the that's just the nature of the beast sometimes. And so what? So we're uh, we're moving on here. We've got more people coming too, nonetheless, and they're starting hey, to roll in. Hey, but, David, uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to disconnect and dial back in. My camera did not kick in. I'll, okay, I'll dial right back. In. Thank you. You know, technology just does what it does when it does it. It just never fails to do what it does. Well, how's everyone doing? Eric is coming back in a second. More people are loading in. My questions are on the board. And um, just welcome to everyone that is uh, coming in from, or from, uh, from, um, uh, from your Saturdays. So thank you very much for, for dropping by. We've got 12 people so far. We had 50 people register. Some people show, some people don't, but here we are again. I wanna thank everybody that is here. Trevor, I did say hi to you. Thank you for showing up um, and coming. I haven't seen you in a couple of minutes. It's good to see you. How have you been? Man, I'm telling you, um, there's not enough adjectives in the dictionary, at least not in my vocabulary, to describe how wonderful I've been doing. Oh, God. God I can't. Yeah. That is perfect. Uh -huh. That is so thank perfect. You. Thank you for asking. How, how's the world and life and everything else and everybody else treating you? So far, so good. Cannot complain. Um, and I'm happy to be have an opportunity to speak to as many folks as we ha have here. This is a monthly call that happens every month on the fourth Saturday of every month. It's, you, it's normally for um, the mentors and mentees from ICMCP. We penned our group, the Hustlers Group, because um, we're hustling. That's what we do. We hustle and work to develop and grow our, our business acumen, especially in cybersecurity, you being a professor of cybersecurity, you know this well. So just want to thank you for the opportunity for you for you stopping by. I appreciate it very much. Oh man, if it's yeah, got yeah. if it's got ICMCP on it, I'm I'm normally present. You know, when when uh I I gotta be honest, I, I didn't know uh I didn't know um in what part of the region uh, this uh, group was uh, from, I, 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 <laughs> I met the last uh, ICMCP meeting I was with, it was with some folks out on the West Coast. Right. 
uh, the um, hey, Hustlers for Life, Carlos Sandoval, of course. Uh, yeah, you were probably with the group that was in um, the Bay Area. Yes, and, that's it. Uh, yep, the Bay Area, headed up by um, MK Palomar. And that's it. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, but I'm glad you're here. And one of your one of your students is here too. Who is that? Jason Quick. Oh, Quick is in the house. Huh? Quick is in the house. <laughs> man, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you, man. <laughs> Quick is in the house, so it's good to see you. It's good to you know re all all of us to reconnect as we do. Carlos, how are you? I see a Sherry Westmore. I believe Miss Westmoreland, Lamb Jock. These are new folks. Hey, Serenity, one of the one of our original folks from. Um, uh, the Hustlers group, and Craig, that's not a Craig, that's a woman, Craig Phillips. <laughs> Hi, Ebony, how are you? And uh, uh, um, and good to, good to see you guys. Hey, look, so our interviewee, uh, one of my, uh, I'm from Brooklyn, so please excuse this vernacular, and he's from Pittsburgh, so we've got the same sort of vernacular. One of my boys, and one of my partners, and uh, colleagues, and mentors, and uh, and, and mentees is here, Eric Permenter, who is the um, chairman and founder of Lynx Technology Partners, a company we founded years ago, 11, 12 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. He's here today. But before we jump into that, I just want to do a couple of housekeeping things so that we can be on a target and, and have a, a cohesive meeting. Um, number one, this is ICMCP, ICMCP Engage, and it's a monthly club that we host every Saturday, the fourth Saturday of every month, uh, where we uh, invite our mentees to come together and speak about issues that are relevant to them and are of, of, of importance to them. ICMC, ICMCP's Engage program is one that's designed to help grow uh, the careers of mentees here at, uh, at, at, I was getting ready to say Austin, Brooklyn, but ICMCP and those career opportunities uh, are, are, are put together and developed with contributions from diverse talent uh, to, to, to develop diverse talent in the cybersecurity community. Our topic areas are typically uh, career development, um, career spotlighting, transitioning, leadership talk, which is what, what we're talking about today, and a tech talk. Uh, a couple of diversity highlights that are coming up for the next couple of months. Of course, next month in a couple of days, it's September, it's Hispanic, Lati Hispanic and Latino Heritage Month. Um, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And I'll give you this note. So, October is our third anniversary of having the Hustlers Club. We will be interviewing one of the co-founders from uh, ICMCP, and that is Devin Bryant. So he'll be here. So you should all be here to hear about the genesis, the evolution, the development, and ongoing things that are happening. In November, we have Native American Heritage and Military uh, Month, and December is Disabilities Month. A membership at ICMCP is something that most of you are familiar with, but of course, we know that it provides support and memberships for those that are trying to navigate their way through the industry. And it could be a tricky industry, could be an easy industry, but our approach is here to help you navigate through that process. Um, you can explore, go through exploration, assessing and developing and connecting with ICMCP to grow your particular, uh, uh, particular skill set or your discipline or practice in ICMCP. And if in fact you are not he you're here and you're not a member, you can see that our, uh, our link is at the bottom, icmcp.org. You should go there and register and then find your way through the uh, find your way through the um, website because there's a lot of resources there to help. You can see that our mission is listed here. It's consistent representation of women, underserved minorities in cybersecurity through programs that are developed and designed and foster to foster recruitment, inclusion, and retention. I really want to thank you all for being here today. And there's a couple of items here on the right hand side that you can see that are about upcoming events between October 31st and September 29th. There's one more thing I wanted to look, let you look at our ground rules. We know that we, everybody mutes to avoid background noise. Conversation usually goes for about 45 minutes to an hour. It's question and answer period. Put your questions in the chat box or be prepared to come off mute to speak to uh, Mr. Pimenter who's here. Session is being recorded. And so you're looking forward to hear your, hearing your, your feedback at the end of the um, session. Uh, I'll put this in the chat box, but this is a, a survey that we uh, want to be able to, for you for you folks to go on after you've seen this presentation and give a survey on what you think about our discussion here today 
And uh, with no further ado, I got one question here, but we'll go leave that uh, for later. Um, what I'll do is I'll jump out of here, stop sharing, uh, and I'll stop sharing here and bring up some imagery and jam lock. And am I on? I live. Can you see me, everyone? There I am. Yes. Good. Eric Permenter. Hey, hey. Good God Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this one, man. There you go. Hey, look, this is the image of a founder and CEO and chairman of uh, cybersecurity. This is the image that we all aspire to. Eric, and I hope you guys don't mind if I call him Eric, my man. How have you been? I you am look wonderful, well. dude. I'm, I'm mind, body, and soul, brother. Mind, That's body, and thing. soul. That's a good thing, man. We've known each other. I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time. You know, you and I can always jump on the phone, and we always do jump on the phone. We want to talk Indeed. to each other, but we've got a couple of folks here, and I know people will be trailing in, and they'll be upset when they get down the road, and they've missed most of the conversation that you and I are going to have. And we've known each other for a little over 26 years. We've created one or two companies together, and um, uh, I know you, but I'd like you to give a glimpse to the audience of the person that I call AP for president. <laughs> right? Tell everybody who you are. And give us a little, uh, give us a little uh, view of who your conversation about who you are, Eric, if you don't mind. Sure, sure, sure. Ha happy to do so. But I, I can't, I can't begin without first and foremost thanking uh, ICMCP uh, the, and the Hustlers Club. Uh, and you personally, Dave, for allowing me the opportunity to engage in a conversation with you all, right? And that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a, a conversation where I hope to be able to walk away and answer as many questions for you all as I possibly can and just share some nuggets about um, my experience, uh, you know, entering the cybersecurity realm and, and navigating it, right, where, where necessary. Um, about me, um, I actually um, have been an entrepreneur since 94. Come on, Dave, you ready to do the rap with me, right? <laughs> right? So we used to do that all the time, whereas uh, that was our, our, our kickoff because I, I have been an entrepreneur that, that long. My first uh, entree uh, into the entrepreneurial space uh, came after I had... Uh, left the military where I spent five years uh, focusing on uh, battle tactics for division and corps uh, commanders, um, and then doing some time in an administrative back office um, uh, corporate, corporate setting. Uh, I, computers were always interesting to me, and I knew I wanted to get into it, and uh, I had an opportunity to, to get involved with an early stage startup, which really, really, really kicked things off for me. Fast forward, because we, we are going to touch upon some of that, I'm sure, but fast forward uh, to about 2009, uh, David and I had worked together to found uh, uh, links with another colleague of ours, Gina Mahan, and um, it's, been, uh, it's been a fun ride. Uh, it's been a fun ride. Originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a little bit about me, originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, right out of the military, had an opportunity to go to New York and, and really cut my teeth in the business world. And if, you know, you know how, you know how it goes, they say, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Uh, and it's been, uh, it's been a, a pretty good, pretty good ride so far. I'll stop there, Dave. Thank you very, thank you very much, Eric. Listen, you've been through, and I've, you know, I've seen you professionally and personally, we've been through several iterations and several steps and levels to maturation. You know, when you talked about your, your, your starting in Pittsburgh and going to the military and then coming to New York, at what point did you realize that you were about as grown up as you need to be ready to address the real world, and step into that real world and get going and be serious about your life? Mm. 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 Ooh, that's a loaded one right there. We did say it was straight talk, didn't we? <laughs> we did, we did, we did. So, so you know, be, be keeping keeping it a hundred. I think um, I think there's still days where I question whether or not I'm I'm ready, mm -hmm. um, because you, you always, I, I always uh, push myself to the to the to the next limit. 
Um, but but I think when I, I realized that I was at least able to accept some more responsibility uh, around the corporate world uh, was when I had uh, I was I was um, I was working with a uh, an early stage software company and we, we had a really amazing ride for about two years. Uh, we were waiting for a, a, a new version of a technology to come out. Um, I've been telling my customer for two years that it was coming, and, and then I was informed that you know it was going to slip another year. Well, my entire sales pipeline blew up at that moment because my customers had been waiting for it, and there was no way that I could go back to them and tell them, "Give me another another year." So I, I had to inform my manager at the time that we're, you know, you're going to miss your number because my pipeline just blew up. That doesn't ever go well uh, when you're when you're working for folks. And um, I had to decide whether or not I wanted to continue to fight that fight and 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 nudge my customers along, sometimes being on the border of being disingenuous and, or 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 quit. And I. And I quit, right? I chose that I could no longer, relationships are important. So I chose that I would, I would go ahead and, and quit. And at that time, um, it's interesting. I, I, you know, first person you call, first person I call was my wife. And I said, you know, wh what do I have to, what do I have to do to, you know, make the bare minimum, right? In order for us to, 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 to live comfortably. And to my right. surprise, right? To my surprise, that was, not as much as what I thought it was, right? So here I am over in this corporate world, right? Drinking what they drink, doing what they do, just to make sure that I can climb the ladder and compete. And I'm chasing this salary that's supposed to match this, this title just because that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't know why, but that's what I'm supposed to do. And long story short, when I realized that my number was a quarter of what I was chasing, it made it easier for me to realize what the potential for me to do something else was, right? And so what I had done at that time was I said, I went to the same individuals that I was selling something to before, sold them something else under a different brand. And, then, and that was the beginning of, you know, truly stepping into that entrepreneurial um, role and accepting re the responsibilities. That, that, is, that is incredible. You know, yeah. uh, I know a lot about you. But <laughs> that's one of the things that, seems to be a little bit of a new revelation, but you know, we're all growing, evolving and changing. And that's, that's, man, Eric, that's, uh, that's profound. And, and all of you mentees on the line should hear that because there's this expectation, visualization or ecosystem that tells you what you have to do, have to be. And, it, and if, unless you begin to ping yourself and ping that environment to see what's really necessary, Eric and I used to call this our monthly nut. Mm -hmm. What do we need to yeah. a monthly nut to sustain and to live? So I want to go a bit, a bit deeper. You are the founder and chairman of Links Technology Partners. If you don't mind, I'm looking both ways. I got like three screens here. <laughs> You're the founder and a chairman of Links Technology Partners. It's a firm that delivers integrated risk management solutions to the industry. Yeah. Did you did you choose this path? Because I know I've been with you for a while, but did it choose you? Mm. So that's an interesting. Uh, so that's an interesting question. Um, I definitely chose the path of dealing with computers. Um, at at that time, it was defined as IT. Cyber wasn't uh, cyber wasn't uh, a word that was thrown around at that back back then. It was more programmers, and I, you know I, I watched these highly intelligent individuals who were huddled in the back of a room, you know, banging on keyboards, come out of that shadow and become what is known as a chief information security officers. And it's because, um, you know, those individuals have, it was interesting, they were the ones that were tinkering with the code and the hardware and the software, trying to make it work at first. And then they had realized the vulnerabilities associated with it, so they became focused on securing them. So for 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 me, um, I think that uh, I think that um, 
when I when I realized what, when I was going to come into the to the cyberspace. Wait, I lost my train of thought, Dave. Forgive me on that. There forgive it is. We're getting, that. we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, forgive me on that. Bring me back. Bring me back, Dave. You're used to it now. That, yeah. 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 I mean, so you, you started there. You, you, you know, you were in the room, you were looking around, and you decided yeah. to become the CEO of Lynx Te Technology Partners. Well, and it was the yeah. risk management. Yeah, it was the yeah. risk management that you was asking me. So yeah, I just I knew I wanted to do IT. Um, cyber came when patch management started to come down uh, the lane. Um, risk management came on our purview when um, customers started asking us more about uh, what do these vulnerabilities mean mm -hmm. to my business, right? right? We had to translate the technical jargon to something that they can make decisions on. And that's, you know, business, business risk. Um, and, and I think where, why I went to where the CISOs were and where they started from is because what you're going to start to see, at least in my opinion, you're going to start to see these uh, CISOs even evolve further away from that original core and start leading some of these most, uh, some of the most advanced and secure companies that, that are out there. Um, they know what the best, they know what good looks like. A lot of these companies are going to continue to be measured by that good standard, hence some of the requirements like CMMC coming out. Um, so I think they're going to even come further out of, the, out, of, out of the shadow, which is why I connected to it. Sure, sure. And CISOs uh, are, the, the role is evolving so much um, from just being largely technical. In our business at Austin, Brooklyn, one of the core things that we teach and train folks is you have to have three things. You have to have business skills to understand what the business is. What are the critical requirements, the critical things that you need to do to run a business? And, and then you have to have communication skills. And then on top of that, you have to have the technology skills to be able to communicate what are the critical assets and how do you protect them? And so those things sort of follow each other. It's almost like the NIST pro project. But in your in your in your in your journey uh, to leadership in cybersecurity, um, it sounds like there's some key things that you key chasms or key gaps that you overcame or you you traversed. Um, what are some of those critical, relevant experiences that sort of steered you to be, uh, you know, the AP for president, if you will? And you know, give one if you can, key sort of experience that you went through. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think you touched upon um, one of them, which is just, you know, being ready, right? Understanding the business, understanding what it is that you're trying to accomplish and the like. I, I remember days when um, I always walked around with a book, and, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It wasn't a little book. It was a really, really big book that you, you know, you, you, you couldn't even fit in, your, fit in your book bag back then, right? But always being prepared, always um, sharpening the mind and making sure that you're prepared for whatever journey you're about to, about to go on, right? And it goes beyond, um, you know, being, 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 being certified um, on a particular um, application or just, you know, reading up uh, on someone's website before you're going in and, and doing a, an interview. One particular um, uh, scenario that comes to mind to me when I, you know, when I really knew that I prepared for success was when I was going after uh, an opportunity with uh, HBO. And I can use their name because this was 20 plus years ago or so. So I'm, I'm, I'm going after an opportunity with HBO, HBO and I talked to one of my mentors and he said, well, what do you know about it? And he, and I, and I said, well, they have a television show and you know, you can watch, you know, I, I only knew the entertainment side of them. And he says, well, aren't you interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you? And I said, hmm, I, I, did, I didn't know. I, I really didn't know. And what he had taught me was, go in there knowing as much as them as you want to tell them about you and you are guaranteed to have a meaningful conversation period right so what i had done was i went and i studied i went and i to read their annual report got a look at their 10ks and i was just able to associate with the 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 challenge that they were going through when they were talking about they needed to re reduce costs 
for this reason, right? Or they wanted to increase revenue. And so adding to the conversation, demonstrate that I was prepared to partner with them and that I understood the responsibility of what they were going to be able, you know, of the trust that they were going to place in me in order to support their business. You used, you used two words in there, responsibility and trust. And, uh, you know, and everything in cybersecurity really just depends and starts with trust. Relationships trust start but with verify. Trust, trust yeah. but verify. B business opportunities start with trust. You really do tr start with trust. And so you've built, over time, you've built up, a, uh, you know, a, quite a list of colleagues and partners who trust you. And so when you started, uh, when you, I was getting ready to say Austin Brooklyn again, when you started Lynx Technology Partners, you really started with trust and people began to, it, it began to listen to your conversation about how you're planning to secure their environment and protect their data, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we're barely scratching the surface when we come to cybersecurity. And there's a lot of there's a lot of big threats out there, Eric. I mean, there's huge threats out there. Some of them start so small and end up huge and voluminous. Over the next two or three years, what mm -hmm. are you seeing? I mean, you you you've got a bleeding edge sort of mentality. I know that. Yeah. You know, help our help our mentees and colleagues here to understand what you look at and what you see. Yeah, you know, I think the, the human factor is going to always remain um, one of the weakest points, uh, no matter how much we evolve, because we're programming at a, we're programming malicious things at a rate that our humans can never, never keep up with. That's why you got AI trying to analyze AI over cyber. And it's so I think the human is going to always be that weak, the weaker link. The, the more that we're able to privatize the identities of humans um, and, and, and map that back to a single identity, a single source of truth, I think the closer you're going to be able to get to a quote unquote, zero trust model specific to humans, right? So that's the segue into, um, you know, and, and I don't like to use buzzwords, but having a zero trust business model is something that is going to uh, drastically shift the, the, the way that risk are, are being managed within a, in, in a business and, and how we are protecting against um, against those those risks as well. I, I was I was I was reading something the other day, and and it really um, it, it really it really made me think. And so there's this concept of being able to secure the internet. You can't control the internet, but you, you there isn't a, a, a thought around being able to uh, create a secure layer. Uh, between the internet and the exchange of everything, right? And so as you start to move to this zero trust environment, your financial services companies are going to uh, start to say, or I, I believe, I believe we're really talking out there, right? But, but I believe they're going to start to say, unless you have a zero trust posture, I'm not going to open up my services to you. So you might not be able to establish a banking relationship because they recognize because you don't have a zero trust posture because as a human, you've clicked on too many links, right? In the most simple example. So that's, that's the long way of saying humans are going to always be the thing that we're going to want to address. They're the ones that's managing, uh, you know, secure, I should say, not address that we're going to want to secure. They're the ones that are managing, developing, and creating everything. And the closer we get to a zero trust model, um, the better we're going to be at being able to, I think, manage, manage the access rights around it. You I know, hope that, that makes sense. That, you know, your statement sort of took me out into a couple of areas because you mentioned AI and zero trust, but isn't AI is created by humans. So it is. There, there is a... There is a sense of vulnerability there with the very tool that we're creating to help 
obfuscate security or get around and, and, and ensure security. Is there is there is there a concern there? And that leads also, Eric, to are we there yet? Are we gonna be there yet ever? So AI and are we there yet, please? Yeah, a, a, AI, I don't think we're we're there. Uh, I heard one of the wisest statements one time, whereas they said, AI only gets you to the wrong decision faster, right? Um, or the right one faster, right? That, that's really what it does. But what you're going to start to hear, or if you haven't already, are self-healing networks, right? Self-healing networks, not the ones that are just, um, you know, blocking a firewall rule or, um, you know, quarantining a, a, a system, we're talking about truly analyzing the, the, the attack path that is trying to be exploited and um, deceiving that attacker, that that path, that's where you see some uh, attack deception technologies and stuff like that. You're going to uh, start to see bots basically look at that threat, establish a profile for it and have a reaction to it while also providing incident response related information to the analyst to act beyond what the technology is going to be able to do. Um, there's, there's a particular technology that we're, we're um, you know, kind of playing with right now. Um, I won't do any brands or anything like that here, but it is, it is, it is close, Dave. To answer your question, it is close. Um, how we measure close will be determined on the level of maturity that you're trying to achieve around securing whatever it is at the time that you're trying to secure it. So we're 10% of, of Ooh, where we- 10%. It, it's, it's, when I say it's close, we're close. You got stuff out there like, there's, there's products out there right now that you can ask simple questions to and, and, and they'll do things for you as a result of it. What you want, what you want to do, is buy, build enough knowledge uh, around uh, within that technology for it to think 14 more steps down the road without having to call it AI. Right, and that's right. what they're trying to define as self healing. I right. hope that makes sense. Thank you. You did answer the question. Thank you. Great, great, great coverage. Great answer there. In, in some of your previous answers, you sort of led into the human factor, and I do want to ask you about in a couple of questions about the human factor. I mean, obviously, you know, the cry, depending on who you listen to, Eric, mm -hmm. you got 2,000, 2 million people and 3 million vacancies. Yeah. Um, and, you know, ICMCP is one of the organizations really focused on trying to resolve and address that, that vacancy rate. Western Brooklyn is one as well. Lynx Technology Partners is, is doing that. And then, you know, you have people and then you have people in the supply chain, mm -hmm. all of these companies that are trying, that have this intense level of security thought process, right. but then their supply chain may not have that same. We can, we can talk about numerous challenges there and numerous incidents, recent and past, but mm -hmm. what's, what's your thought about, what, what's your thought about the human supply chain of security practitioners? Where are they? We're, and remember, we're talking to a group, and there are some, there's some professionals on the line here too, but we're talking to college professors on this line, sure. and mentees, and folks that are in the industry. So sure. what's, your, what's your thought about this shortage of practitioners, and how do we resolve that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's real. It remains real. Um, I, I, I struggle with it every single day when we are trying to deliver uh, security operation centers for some of the largest companies in the world, they're, 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 they're rate, the rate at which they are being targeted can quickly turn to burnout, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and so you have a lot of threat intelligence platforms and SIMs and stuff like that that try to crunch terabytes of data down to consumable information, but you can never have enough eyes on glass, period, period. So SOC operations roles are always gonna be open irregardless of how much you try to automate the threat detection capabilities. That's point number one. Number two, 
e when the eyes are on glass, if an event occurs, you still need individuals that are going to respond to that event. So incident responders, huge hot hot market right now. You cannot get enough of them um, uh, to, to 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 support the amount of ransomware that's coming down. Right, some of these. Um, uh, you know, these supply chains, these third party vendor risk, uh, you know, uh, supply chain attacks and stuff like that, you, ju you, you just can't, you can't get enough. And so how do you start to go about to solve that? It, it, it's, it's about looking, at, you know, for the larger companies, it's about looking within their companies to see how they can evolve existing uh, non-technical individuals into a career path that leads to cyber what that means to anyone that's on this line who is not already in cyber is that there are companies that are out there that are looking for non-cyber individuals to join their teams, right? So don't, do not not apply for a job because you've not completed your cybersecurity certification or you don't have, um, um, you know, a, a year worth of experience because at the end of the day, if you read their K-12, Right, and you're able to explain to them how the, the 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 their nearest competitor got breached by ransomware, and you identify that as one of their risk factors. I promise you, they're going to take that conversation a lot more serious than you walking in there and telling them you know how to hack and break into an application. Right? It's just it's just it's just reality because that you put enough time into it. So so one looking at non traditional areas within the business within the business. Second, um, we, we, we need to look for um, non-traditional areas um, in, in public, right? Uh, you, and Dave, you've heard me say this many a times, right? There, there are a lot of individuals who are wrongfully incarcerated that had spent time reading, absorbing data and information. Well, that's a lot of what you have to do when you're a risk analyst and looking at governance, risk and compliance frameworks, who better to absorb that information. And you know, for, for folks who consider that criminal or them criminals, even after they get out proven, proven as innocent, they never really have to get close enough to the really sensitive data. So there's no risk, right? So it's just looking and being creative about finding that way. But, but more importantly, or I should say equally importantly, for the individuals that are on this line and the ones that are already raising their hand and the ones who are setting up their labs and you know, on their own and doing their own testing, there needs to continue to be a huge support system around, around those individuals so that we can accelerate their entree into the cybersecurity field. That's where you know, uh, organizations like ICMCP and, and programming of scholarships and getting mentors and conversations like this, you know, building your network and connecting. That's where all of that stuff really comes into play. And you start fostering those individuals that are really applying themselves. And I think you start chipping away at it a little bit. But at the end of the day, the problem will, will, will continue to remain larger than what us humans will be able to keep up with as long as the humans, right, are programming the code. We're chase, kind of kind of chasing our tail, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. Interesting concept, because we always say that technology, and we've always said this too, Eric, that technology actually just enables people to do things better, quicker, faster, or wrong. And you've mentioned that earlier. And so technology is there to be a, a support system. And, it, you know, you, 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 you're the person, right, that pulled me into ICMCP. We're both pretty integral to ICMCP. And, and we do a lot with, uh, with and for ICMCP. Um, this organization has, has done some, some pretty critical things. W you know, name one or two of the things that you've done with ICMCP. And then I wanna also traverse that, that conversation to um, what, what, is, what is Lynx doing to help bridge that chasm for women and minorities specifically. So ICMCP sure. and the chasm. I'm sorry I'm loading them up because yeah. I'm watching the time, Eric. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. We can keep, we can keep going. I'll tell you, ICMCP has been um, 
really amazing, right? The first couple of years, they were, you know, we, I should say, they, we, we were handing out um, uh, scholarships in, you know, the $50,000, $60,000 range. So really making an impact. Uh, and then we, we, we started to grow and, and mature that in ways that, um, um, that, 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 that really started to make a measurable impact because we were getting individuals connected to SANS training um, at, no, at, at, you know, at no cost. Um, we were making sure that individuals who were going for uh, job descriptions were, I'm sorry, for going for job for interviews were getting mock interviews. Right, really preparing them to go in there and 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 answer the tough questions and be prepared with that information to 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 um to to do as well as they can, but you know at the end of the day, we, we're, I think where you see ICMCP going is really expanding. Be the, they really understand that at the end of the day, it's about engagement, right? you'll see a lot of organizations that that will have all of the programming and all of the networking and it's automated for you right so you go on the line you got here you get to engage with individuals as far as i mean literally as recent as thursday i i was at the new york city icmcp chapter um, kickoff uh, at top golf uh, in new jersey right out in Edison, where we had some folks come out and we hit, I had one young man, and this is, you know what, Dave, I'm sorry to ramble a little bit, but this is really, really top of mind. So I had one young man, uh, his name was Eric. He, he drove from Staten Island um, to Edison, New Jersey. And for those who are not familiar with that distance, that's about an hour, hour and 20 minute ride. It's a good ride. But he came over because he had learned that ICMCP was putting on the event. And when I asked him, how did you learn about ICMCP? He says, well, I participated in their capture the flag. Well, first and foremost, he said he doesn't have any cybersecurity background. He's transitioning his a role. He was a, um, a, a, a teacher training adults on software, right? Had nothing to do with cyber at all. He decided to make the transition, get, found out ICMCP, found out about ICMCP, registered for a capture the flag, got connected to security innovations technology, ended up going through the training right over a couple of weeks, competed for one of the events in rank number seven. Okay. That is what ICMCP does. Okay. Th then, then he comes to an event, and at the event, where we, ICMCP, is there connecting him to folks like Henry Jiang, who's the CISO over at Diligent, right? Remember from the Yopco days. We're connecting him to Keith um, Hollander, partner at Morgan Franklin. And I'm, I'm mentioning these names because these are individuals that I'm welcome, I'm, I'm happy to connect you all to as well. But at the end of the day, it's about engagement. Hence, ICMCP and in, in, engage. So, sorry to ramble. You heard me get excited yeah. there and yeah. start to ramp yeah. up a bit. But yeah. the impact, the impact that their programming does, just always gets me excited. The, so. the impact and the passion that, and you know, it's one of the things, and I'll just take two seconds here. One of the things that I always say is that when you're trying to get into uh, to cybersecurity, it's not that people won't help you, but they'll help you if you help yourself. Right. right. You you have to be your own chief advocate, your own chief um, motivator. Uh, don't let the money motivate you because you can get money anywhere. Right. But the point being is that in, 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 in cybersecurity, you can do some really great things for the community, for the country, for yourself, for your family. But it's not going to be just a walk in the park to get there. This is a discipline and a practice that is above many others and requires your most diligent engagement and involvement. I want to switch gears for a second, Eric. Sure. We're in the middle of a pandemic, right? We're still in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it's ravaged many a company, large and small. Sure. And it's ravaged many a lifestyle, rich and poor. And so I'm wondering, what have you learned 
as a chairman and founder, as you evolve, because in some sense, you know, you evolved to, to this point of being a founder, a chairman. You've been sure. a founder for most of your existence, but I mean, what did you learn from that? And what did you learn as a chairman sitting at the top of the, at the tower, taking a look at the landscape? What did you learn? I learned that um, there is, there aren't, there aren't, there's nothing more important than understanding the culture of your business. As a founder, there's nothing more important than, than understanding the culture of your business. Why do I say that? The culture is led by the people. The people are um, impacted by their conditions. The pandemic impacted everyone's condition. Everyone's, right? And some folks were able to hunker down and fight through it. Others fell apart a little bit. And you know that you have the right culture when your people are able to make it through it um, as a team, right? The, the, how that relates to this group, how this, as individuals, for me, and I'll speak for myself, I won't even, I won't even try to make this reference for you all. But for me, for me personally, I, I took the opportunity to, to, to go in deep uh, on myself to understand what other areas that I could improve. To my earlier point, I can always learn something. I can always improve something. I can always do something better. I, I, I also took the time to find ways that I can do something better for someone else. Because if it's always about yourself, I promise you, you're going to be you're you're going to be standing in a room all by yourself, patting yourself on the back. So always look to I always look to pay it pay it forward. And then I, I think the third was just connecting back with the people that you love, friends, families. Um, you know, it, it that's what makes us tick. That's what makes us human. And so I think that, that that's what I really, I, that's what I learned that, that, that the human factor um, is, is, is just key. It's key to be nurtured. It's key to be maintained because I think that drives, it drives a lot. I hope that answers your question. Sure, sure. I, 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 I wasn't going to give you a technical answer because it, it, there was nothing that evolved or, or was whiz bang from a technology perspective. It was really managing people um, and, and yeah. COVID associated with it. Yeah, and it, it, that, this whole COVID thing is really open and it's opened up an, a crazy attack surface. Right. Oh, so, some of the time. From that, oh, wait, Dave. No, no, wait, 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 wait. We're going to get there. Oh, we're, okay. No, 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 I, in fact, I'm there. <laughs> I'm yeah. there. I mean, it opened up an incredible attack surface. I mean, and as a chair, you know, as in your business, you're, you're working with some enterprise size companies that have supply chains that don't have the same level of, con of, of security concepts that the enterprises have. I mean, get in there for a minute, Eric. I mean, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> some of the best, some of the best attacks that I've seen uh, happen during during, during COVID. And um, you roll it up into the category of ransomware. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I, I seen some phishing and some spam campaigns that looked so real that I almost clicked. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I had my CFO forward me over a email from one of our banking institutions and I looked at it and I was like, holy crap, we got hacked because it showed a negative balance on the, on the, right on the thing. And I text her and I said, hey, did you, did you see that email? And she says, I'm the one that forwarded it to you, right? And so the really, 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 really real type of things that were in, resulting in the increased rate of the, these, these attack, attacks happening. Um, I think the other thing too was that the the target that so I think individuals were being targeted as much if not more than the larger corporations because 
there were so many more people at home. There were so many more people that was expected to be kind of off of their P's and Q's because they had a relaxed nature, relaxed state at home and the like. So I think the rate in which uh, attacks were, or occurred in the, in the success, the rate of success of those attacks, it, it created an environment that made you all even more valuable as security analysts and folks that are in the SOC and, and, and the like and risk managers. Certainly, and certainly. And, you know, and you would think that human nature would tell you that, especially if you have a security approach, that mm -hmm. I'm out from behind the veil, the corporate veil, behind from being behind that big protecting wall, that yes. I would do things more. But it, it doesn't seem to be that way. I just want to say this to the, to, to the, to the, to the group. In a couple of seconds or a minute or so, maybe a question. So I'm going to turn to the group to ask you to ask Eric questions, either put them in the chat or um, come off mute to say them. But Eric, um, you're a chairman now. Yes. Together we were like technologists. I remember we, I remember us crawling under desks <laughs> <laughs> at museums, at schools, churches. That's right. Yeah, man. I remember being in grimy places, but you. We've come from through this, uh, you know, this tech world into um, leadership to ownership. See, I would say, so can I call you founder and chairman too? My man. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it. I love it. You know, and, 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 and so give me some comparisons between being the CEO, because you used to be chief revenue officer. You brought home the bacon. I remember we used to bring home some bacon, boss. <laughs> yeah. Big bacon, too. And so CEO, mm. you know, founder, CEO, and chairman, just that whole evolutionary process, mm. just some comparisons in, in role requirement. You know, and these are mentees here that are aspiring to be like you. Right. right? So right. keep this in mind when you answer, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so CEO, founder, and chairman. So actually it's supposed to be found, yeah, founder, CEO, chairman. Okay, so founder, why do it in the first place? Um, for me, as I mentioned earlier, I realized that it could not be that difficult if all I had to do was make X because I was making Y for somebody else for years. Right, so just make the X, and I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be okay. And so, if you, if you are out there ready to be a founder, set realistic goals, and understand that the obstacles are are there for a reason, but there are ways to get around them. You, you'll never know it all. That's that's from a founder's perspective. From a CEO perspective, so founder, you're brave enough to go out there and do it. CEO, got to figure out how to get it done. And my first run at it, I'll tell you, I went, I went eight, nine months without being able to close a single deal. And this is coming from being able to close deals for a number of other companies prior to. So you, you go from thinking you're a rock star to not even being able to do it for yourself. Well, what I learned in that experience the gold nugget there is sometimes even the people who you sold to for years or the people that you have worked with for years do not have the risk tolerance to make a decision to rely on you because you're just one person. You're the best person in the world, but you're just one person and they got to deliver a big project. So it's not the same positioning your small CEO brand, right? Your CEO startup and selling that as easy as it might be for that larger company that you left for. Left for. So don't get caught up in your own hype is basically what I'm saying. Um, and then from a chairman perspective, know when your time is up, right? You're, 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 you're building this plan um, with a goal of elevating yourself to the next level. Know when you are in your way of getting to that next level and find and hire the smart people to come in and take what you've been able to get off the ground 
and take it to the next level for you. And I think when you, when you get to that point, you're able to kind of sit in that chair and be amazed by how awesome people can be. Right. Nice. Yeah. Impressive. 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 Hey. You know, you said you said a couple of things, um, and and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, Janice, I'm gonna turn to you, Carlos, I'm gonna turn to you, Jamrock. Look like you were off mute for a couple of seconds, but you may be back on. But I'm gonna turn to you guys in a couple of minutes to ask you to, you to to ask some questions. But there were a couple of things that you said, Eric. Go, goals. Yes. And yeah. obstacles. Obstacles are meant not only as qualifiers; it's meant to weed out the chaff. Correct. Right. It's meant to, even when you're in an interview and you're thinking, they're asking me some great questions, man, those questions are eliminating. <laughs> those questions are to eliminate, not include. They're trying to weed out the, the, you know, necessarily the folks that are not ready. I won't say that they're a waste, but they're just not ready. And also when it comes to goals, I use an acronym called SMART goals. Mm. SMART being specific, mm -hmm. M being measurable, A being achievable, R being relevant and T being timely. All of those things, when you take it into account, you have to have smart, measurable goals that you go after and achievable goals that make sense. Shooting for the moon when, you, when you're on a pogo stick just may not be the right thing to do unless you got like a rocket propelling pogo stick. But yeah. think, of, think about it. Uh, so Carlos, you were, you were the first. I know you've got your question here. Do you want to come off mute and ask it? Carlos is the mentee. And, yeah, uh, let's you talk. Come let's yeah, talk. definitely. Um, so my thing. Uh, come on, Carlos. My... Come off mute and give it to us. Uh, can you hear me? Give yes. me a second. Oh yeah. So um, I was just saying, yeah, because you were talking about the pandemic. I I was just saying how I think people were just so much more vulnerable in a different state because of the pandemic. So that just led uh, for way more attacks, just because everything in the news, and then you would get an email that seemed like from a health provider, from a news. Um, source from like the CDC and we had that happen at our company and people were just clicking on links that you know were just uh, malicious but my question uh, to you was you know being in cybersecurity for so long and IT for so long what are some of the common mistakes that you see um, people that are trying to get into this space um, or people that are super early in their career make yeah great good, good question Carlos good, good question um, not being proactive enough right? Uh, kind of just uh, waiting around for someone to give them this magic script that's going to result in them being inside this very cool security operations center looking at dashboard, right? Or something like that. Just for it to be very specific, one of the things that um, a lot of uh, managers will tell you is that they'll ask you a question um, that's as broad as, Tell me what your lab's like, right? And, and if you don't have a lab inside of your environment, in your home, or you can't say that you're at least running some type of virtual software to where you're testing something, then how proactive are you about taking control of your, 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 your career, right? Um, I, I, so, so just being proactive is, is number one. Number two, not leveraging your network. I think sometimes you know we can we can feel like we 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 got it, or we we're too embarrassed to lean on um, you know lean on that that network for whatever for for whatever reason. Um, I, I think that's 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 one. And if I had to pick um, uh, a third one, it's trying to move too fast, Carlos. Right? There's there's times when and look, you, you can go out and get a million certifications. You can get the best job working for the best brands. And when you're in there and you, you know, you got eight months in, you get a call from a recruiter, right? And you tell them what you're doing. And they're like, oh my God, you're doing that over for Walmart. I got Goldman Sachs that wants that right now. You want to come over here? They're going to pay you, you know, $60 or 200, twice as much basically. A lot of folks will take that and they'll say, oh my goodness, I'm finally this rock star, you know, cybersecurity folks, without understanding that Goldman Sachs environment is four times more complex than what Walmart marks might be, right? So you look like a rock star over here, you may go over here and be a dud. 
And so pace yourself, get your, get your tenure ear and get your tenure in mature your policy, your, your practices and, and, and just continue to keep yourself set up for success. Does that answer your, answer your question, Carlos? Yeah, it definitely did. I mean, it definitely helped me um, answer some questions that I've, I've been having, uh, um, you know, myself, especially, I, I definitely like the one about trying to move too fast, about pacing yourself. I think that's, that's big. Now, in, 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 in Carlos, I'll balance all of that with know your worth, right? Every, every, every year, don't, don't, don't hesitate to um, verify that your compensation is in line with what the market is, is doing. It doesn't mean that you have to jump. It doesn't mean that you have to get bitter or anything. You just need to know that when it's time to make that decision, um, what the potential upside is. Sure, sure. Thank you, thank it's, you. It's, it's always yeah. good to know, it's always good to know what you're talking about and know what it is that you're capable of doing and then being realistic with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, reading your own press to think that you are the crap, the best on the planet, it's great to have that confidence, but verify that by looking around and even being in a network. Hey, what's his name said? Um, Henry Clark, Henry something. You no, have, no, Dave, it, it, Dave, let me interrupt you. Sure. Here, here, team, David told me 25 years ago, you don't have to see it. They don't have to see you coming. <laughs> Remember that, Dave? And the, and the reason being, Carlos, is I, I would, I would, I would over prepare so much for a meeting that when I went in there and I was talking about their business to position our value, I, I would be pushing so hard to make my point that I may be discrediting the other person across the table because they're supposed to know more. Mm -hmm. And Carlos trying to move too fast, right? I need to get that business right now I would I wouldn't even I wouldn't even take the time to pay attention after I said my piece. Right. I'd be ready to walk the room, walk out of the room. And there was one instance where right, right Dave, <laughs> right? I, I finished up the meeting. I know there wasn't any there. I didn't want to waste their time. I wasn't being rude. I didn't want to waste their time. I could not afford to waste mine. And I went off and to, you know, went off about my way. Well, three months later, Dave comes in and new client on the list is that darn client. Well, it was because Dave understood that that customer wasn't ready to move at, at, at my pace and I couldn't understand that. So that's real, that's real, that's real talk. Whereas I had, a, had, a, had someone that was close to me that I trusted, that I, 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 I got good advice from and adjusted accordingly. Yeah. One of the things I've seen Eric do is seek to understand before he gets seeks to be understood. Yeah. This is the age of old concept. Yeah. You don't know. I don't know is, is the best premise to start with. I just don't know. Right. Hey, let me move over to um, Janice Davis. Do you want to, Janice, do you want to come off uh, mute or do you want me to read your? No, sure. I, I'm, I'll come off mute. Hey, Janice, uh, how are you? I'm doing well, David. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Much. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I, this is the first time I even know. hearing about this. So, <laughs> and I was like, a Saturday meeting? What is this? And, and um, so anyway, I'm really, really glad I came. This has been a, a, a great talk just to be able to, to hear people who, uh, who are just willing to just uh, give knowledge to other folks. It's just, it's great. Um, a, a few nuggets that I'm, I'm capturing. So that's, that's wonderful. I wanted to know if, if either uh, you or, or Eric can uh, provide any insight in getting into identity and access management. Um, so I realize that I am not one who likes to detect. I'm not a pen tester. I am not on that side of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I um, find that um, I am more interested in identities or um, provisioning, um, deprovisioning users, that kind, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I just have wondered what kind of 
how do I transition into a position like that? There's really no certifications that I've found where, you know, so I'm just kind of. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good question, uh, Janice. Where, 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 what, what field are you in today, if you don't mind me asking? Um, today, I am um, a business analyst um, in an, in an, at an entertainment company. Yeah. I am responsible for um, capturing, I guess, all of our business processes and making sure that they are implement in, implemented in this particular software, where I am the, the SME for um, the security realm and the distribution realm. Yeah. And so. Got um, it. If, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, so perfect. So you have the business analyst um, skill set already, which is a, a plus. Um, privilege, privilege access management group. Do you have mm -hmm. one of those inside of your company? We do. Okay. We, we do. That's that's the group that typically owns uh, identity and access management. So I would look for any uh, roles that are open within your company under that group. Um, that you might be interested in step number one because transitioning in within is absolutely the the, the easiest um, step number uh, step number two most um, business analysts will look to secure a certification in a technology and or a methodology or a framework right mm -hmm. around the subject matter expert that or the, the, the subject that they are trying to be experts about so in your instance um if if you if you if you if there's no openings in that uh pam group right privilege and, and access management group then at, try to find out what technology um they're using and see if you can get a freeware or free course of that technology from that vendor's website so that you can start playing with it and or reading the user manual. Okay. Then, right, then this is what I call hacking the system, right? I just call it hacking the system. Then Janice, what you'll do is end up just sparking a conversation with someone in that privilege at an access management group just on the topic. And, at, and right, the, right then and there, you'll have an opportunity to express your interest. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that just because the position isn't open or it isn't posted inside your account, they have the headcount. <laughs> they okay. just can't hire enough folks in there or the budget hasn't been for, 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 uh, opened up yet. So do that so that you have something to talk to those individuals about in the group that you are trying to go to. And then lastly, I always like to include something real world. Um, if you're really interested in it, um, our partner, Morgan Franklin, who co-sponsored the Top Golf with uh, a top ICMCP Top Golf with us uh, last week, has one of the largest identity and access management practices around management in, in management consulting firms. So I'd be happy to get you directly connected to Keith, who would likely get you connected to the identity, his, his practice uh, manager for identity and access management. And even if, again, even if a role isn't there, you got another touch point and you got somebody that you can have the conversation with. And that is how, uh, what I like to call ICMCP engage and activate, right? So we'll just get you directly connected to the individual so that you can at least have the conversation. I, you know, I, Janice, I'd like to add one, one thing, one or two things. Uh, early on, we said uh, three things that you need, business, communication, and technology. Eric just laid that out understand the business that you're in, how they make money, follow the money. Mm -hmm. Following the money puts you in line of skills and capabilities. It puts you in line of relevancy because if you're irrelevant, I remember Al Sharpton saying at a meeting that Eric and I were at, it's tough to preach a eulogy for an irrelevant Negro. <laughs> <laughs> Be wow. relevant. Be yeah. in the line. So understand the business and what matters. Communications now comes to you need to be, you want to be able to communicate with the folks in that unit that Eric was talking about, privacy unit, communicate with them so that they know that there's an interest. And right. then be, you begin to create that level of, create, of that connectivity. And of course, learning the technology. Carlos did this. He started out like as a level two 
mm. <laughs> with his company. And now he's on this, and he volunteered to work there you in go. cybersecurity. He volunteered to work in cybersecurity, and now he's a member of the cyber team. So, nice. uh, so, so the, the the road and the the model is there, J uh, Janice. And thank you for coming. And please come back again. Hey, and, I know we've and, got a and I mean that, David. Please, Janice, you can have my details or whatever. In fact, I'll put it in the I'll window. Put it in you guys can I will reach out to you, Eric. Thank please you do. very much, both of you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Before, before we close, because I want to, I want to get over. We ain't closing mind. yet, are we? we ain't no, no, no. Hey, hey, Eric, in the meantime, while I'm going to see, look at that man. See that early on, Dave? Man, an hour and a half. <laughs> So I'm having so, fun. I'm having fun. I, no doubt, no doubt. I, I wanted to go over to Lambrock. Lambrock, yes. do you want to do you want to come <laughs> off mute and ask your question? Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, Eric. Uh, first and foremost, this is a wonderful uh, platform. Never attended these uh, <clears throat> uh, this hustler uh, group before, but I think this is definitely something that I'll, I'm planning on doing monthly basis. Now I'm play now. Come on. Thank yeah, you. now I'm transitioning from um, from development databases, Oracle, SQL, uh, and I want to go to cybersecurity. And five years down the road, I see myself owning a company that does global cybersecurity service. And I'm new to cybersecurity. Uh, what recommendation do you have for somebody like me who wants to start going to cybersecurity and then now... Um, Taking that, you know, levering that those connections that I have all over the planet, actually all over the world in Europe and Africa in particular, that I can take, you know, whatever skills or whatever service that I have in the U.S. over there. Yeah, great question. Uh, and I'm not just saying that, though you you all are asking some really good questions. Um, um, as a application developer today, right? or developer around the databases and the like, I would move towards application security, right? You understand how software is supposed to communicate through the layers, <laughs> right? You, you, you understand how data is managed based off of the database. Um, with SaaS uh, continuing to be the way in which most, if not all business is being connected, uh, the security of applications and management of vulnerabilities will remain top of mind. It's that which is being exploited in order to begin, right, to follow the attack path to, uh, you know, to, 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 to exploit the vulnerabilities within a network. Um, specific to ICMCP, and, and, and this is something that I'm, I'm pretty sure is still active, but don't quote me on this. Um, the same, in fact, the same gentleman that took the security that I ran into at the uh, ICMCP event on Thursday, that security innovations platform that I had mentioned, if, if yep. Lamb, if you go to securityinnovations.com, mm -hmm. okay, it, they, this 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 is uh, owned by one of ICMCP's board members, and it's not. I promise you, it's not promoting his technology. That's not what this is about. He made his platform, his testing platform available to ICMCP members through some scholarships that you may be able to take advantage of. And what that will allow you to do is start playing inside of the environment to start learning um, what application security consists of. Right then and there, you can validate whether or not this is down the path that you wanna, wanna, wanna go, right? The other <coughs> that's, writing, that's writing secure code it's yeah. not just developing stuff, right? Right and secure code. The right. other is going more on um, uh, the penetration side, uh, penetration testing side. Yeah. I, I'm less, um, um, I, I don't encourage, I'm not encouraging folks to do as much of that today because a lot of pen testing is starting to be automated. So the really good ones are the ones that are getting a lot of the consulting work and the top jobs. So mm -hmm. less less inclined about that, and then I think the only other um, the only other um, uh, area that I would say is you know understanding databases, understanding um, you know how to write code. You ever think about writing a security product, right? Making your own mm -hmm. is is it a you know is it and it doesn't have to be a, a penetration test, but maybe it's a faster sim 
because you know databases and you know how to condense data within those databases to save storage, right? Right, right. There's so many different ways that you could do it. I will tell you this, if I knew how to code, I'd be moving towards product for sure. <laughs> well, th thanks. It would just be a, it would it would just have been a bigger bigger book that he carried around. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank, thanks for the tip, uh, Eric. I just wanted to include that I actually was uh, I had a scholarship to ICMCP, and I was part of the security innovation that uh, got involved in the cybersecurity. Uh, oh, there testing. you go. Yeah, and I also I also went ahead and on my own got my security plus uh, certificate. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, so okay. would you score? Would you score in the range? Do you remember? Uh, in the <laughs> in the range, I think I was like top fifty. I, I was okay. juggling between that and work, so I didn't really focus a lot on it. But yeah, okay, all right. I, I was actually doing them simultaneously. They the security plus and the range at the same time, so that kind of limited me while I work full time. So nice, nice. So so let me ask you this: You mm -hmm. gone through the experience? You like it? Um, you, you did the security innovation. Is application security of interest to you today? I think it, it was. It was. I think it was, um, you know, as a coder, I can easily read the codes and uh, it's just, that's easier for me because I've been doing that for so long. Right. You know. Our, well, there you go. Well, there you go. So I would be, for you, I would be literally looking for application security jobs now. Um, okay. Um, uh, I know Ed looks for top guns for sure. But the reason why I say now is because you can speak to it and you have yep. a data point or that, that you've experienced within the, a capture the flag. But um, well done, man. That's a good example of ICMCP. You know, have you taken advantage, right, of, of an ICMCP benefit? Um, Absolutely. As you Absolutely. continue your, your, your career path. So well done. I, well I done. actually wanted to get my CISC, CISSP certificate, but I just kind of got late for registration. So I was really right to, was really ready to roll on to that. Too. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, there, there yeah. you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, thank also, you. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. And thanks for joining mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And, and Lamrock, also, um, when you go to Security Innovation site, Go to their career pages. I think there's three openings for security developers there that you might be interested in as well. I'll, I'll okay. say this, not in a measure of caution. That sounds like a disclaimer, Dave. But I'll say this, right? Know your stuff for two reasons, right? When you step out of ICMCP and you're representing ICMCP, we're going into the general public. And this is, we're going back into the general public who doesn't look at us the way we look at ourselves. You need to be as sharp as, you need to be so sharp that when you walk out that door into the general public, you are representing the very best of what ICMCP has to offer to the world. Because we don't often get a second shot at, you know, a second shot at a first shot opportunity. So be sharp and be ready and be on your game, right? Be there and be sharp. Um, Serenity. Sure. Serenity, um, I know you typed a question in. I, I'd I like you it. to come off mute, Serenity, and ask your questions to one of my longest friends, longest running friends, who I think I've talked to you about in the past, AP for President Eric Pimenta. Come on, Serenity. Hey, hi, hi Eric. Uh, hi, really Serenity. appreciate you answering all our questions and so fascinating to hear about your journey. Thank so you. I'm wondering, because I, um, I have my first two years of cybersecurity experience uh, after making a career change, thanks mm -hmm. to ICMCP, I was one of the pilots in the pilot students in the ICMCP SANS Diversity Scholarship Program. Nice. Was, so, that, the one, was that the one in California or in Pittsburgh? Um, actually, we were all online. Yeah, okay. it was like an all virtual one. So nice. um, anyway, you know, through David, um, who helped to mentor me, I'm, I'm very interested in entrepreneurship, but I'm sort of wondering, how do we know when we have enough skills and experience to take this leap like you did to being an entrepreneur and working for oneself? Like the, how moment many... you, the moment you identify a gap in the industry that mm. you can address. Okay. I Fair mean, enough. literally, literally, okay. that, that, that's it. And it, it, it's not about having um, all of the resources behind you. It's, it's truly about being able to articulate the problem and um, having uh, enough details about how to solve it 
everyone else will figure out what resources and cost, you know, the, the cost associated with, 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 with doing so. Let me give you a real world example. Okay. So okay. that I, it doesn't sound like I'm just kind of coming off of the cuff. So there was a, there was a, a, a gentleman who had developed a freeware um, software that um, looked at open source threat intelligence and consolidated to make consolidated it to make it more easily consumable into one of the early stage um, sims, right? He, 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 you know, they 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 made it available, and literally this was before you had freemium, and he built a community around it. So everyone that was buying the commercial product of this sim was going to his community and downloading his freeware that he built to make his make him doing his job easier. They want had the same problem. They downloaded it. Before you know it, he had over 100,000 plus downloads. This was before numbers matter, right? Wow. That that the the he knew it was not a hundred percent perfect. He knew that he didn't have the resources to spin it up. What he did was convinced his employer to allow uh, him to utilize it at the customer location so that he could really hone it. So the employer said, heck, no problem. We're adding more value back to the customer. Sure, let's do that. For him, it's a win-win because he says, I get to keep the IP because we already talked about it and my job is easier. Long story short, that technology has evolved into one of the largest threat intelligence platforms today. Oh, wow. Yep. That's pretty cool, yeah. That, that's, a, that's, a real, <laughs> that's a real story. And the only reason why I know it is because I was the employer that, employer that let him utilize it inside of the client location. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. That's, yep. the, that's the network and the ecosystem working together to create okay. new things. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you Eric, won't. We've got Serenity, if you notice, and I think everybody in the phone, you're not going to hear a whole bunch of academic ex, uh, uh, questions or answers from me. They're not going to be textbook. I, I, one thing okay. I did not tell everyone is, I didn't follow the, I didn't take the college path. I went um, out of high school directly to the military uh, where I was working with those battle and co co core commanders on their battle tactics. And I went straight into the, to the, to the work world. So everything, when I, when I was telling you earlier, you, you never seen me without a book. It's because I was doing the things that I was telling you all about proactively readying myself for that next conversation. Right. Wow. And everything that I talked about here today, literally, I can point back to something specific in my life that 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 I can refer and relate to that specific moment. Yeah. Sorry to be long winded on that no, one. But no, I no, think that's great. important. Don't there is no standard for establishing yeah. success. Just that go is, get that it. Is so okay. poignant. And I you know, I don't want to get off on soapbox, but so I won't. But that is so poignant. I, I see Jason. Jason, I, I, yeah, um, yeah, Jason, quick. I, I, I remember you carrying those books, right? On I remember subway. you carrying those big books. And I asked, what's up with that? <laughs> right? And <laughs> so, so you come, to come full circle. Jason, you want to come off mute and ask Eric a question? And we're narrowing it down to the last, what, six minutes, folks. But No problem, no problem. But um, Jason? Uh, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Pen Perman, sir. <clears throat> hey, Jason. Um, I just had the privilege of uh, going through this NSF program at um, uh, this Dakota State University, where uh, over the summer, <clears throat> excuse me, over the summer we were uh, looking for vulnerabilities within IoT devices, and mm -hmm. for our group uh, specifically, mm -hmm. it was for like smart locks. And as I was there, um, I, I kind of got uh, adjusted to. Uh, working with like Bluetooth and finding vulnerabilities within that. And uh, as I was there, I began talking with others around there uh, 
uh, that we're working on uh, technologies for hospitals and uh, medical devices. Yeah. With with me being in Houston, Texas, and having the Texas the Texas Medical Center, um, I kind of and the expansion that they're doing here uh, within the next few years, uh, I was wondering. Um, I guess because as you said. Uh, pen testing is becoming automated. And um, I, I thought I was gonna want to get into cloud pen testing as well, but I'm wondering uh, with, with this window of opportunity, how can I best approach this? And you know, even being something like a security research, it wasn't something I'd considered before, but it's something that I definitely find rewarding. Yeah, that's a great, that's a, that's a great, great, that's a great, another great question. I, I, I'm, again, I'm not just saying that because it's making me think, right, Jason, you just made me think. And, and I think that um, if, if, first and foremost, I love how specific you have defined the opportunity um, around Bluetooth, right? And you have zeroed that down to a geography, uh, a specific hospital, right? And a specific role. So kudos, that, that's awesome. Um, I, think, I think you might want to think about the services or the companies that are providing the services that are readying those hospitals to protect themselves against the things that the automated pen tool, pen testing tools are trying to find. That's a long way of saying, since you know Bluetooth uh, security relatively well, maybe you perform an IT security assessment against the wireless network in that hospital to identify how vulnerable their Bluetooth network is, right? And if you're not doing that assessment yourself, maybe you look for a management consulting firm and remember what I said, right? It's about going to those conversations prepared. The exactly what you just said to me, Jason, is a conversation that you could have with the service delivery manager for a management consulting firm who is providing those services to that hospital. And they should take that conversation extremely serious. I know I would, because you're being thoughtful and intentional about the value that you want to deliver to that organization while you are performing your job. And you're clear about the, uh, the interest and, and what's driving your, your interest, which inherently creates passion. Right, it inherently creates passion. So I, I hope that wasn't too long-winded. I'll shorten it up for you. If I was an entrepreneur who just came through that course as yourself, I'd create a services capability that did IT security risk assessments. And I would target that hospital and say, I think your Bluetooth net, but I think you have a Bluetooth risk. Let me do an IT security assessment so that I can verify that for you. If I was Coming out of that course, and I was looking for a job, I would call into or send an email or connect via LinkedIn to someone in that cybersecurity department and ask them, what do you think about Bluetooth vulnerability? Here's my perspective. Should we chat? Right. Make sense? Yes, Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You got it. Don't Eric. be afraid. Don't look, listen. If I, if I can leave you with one thought, because I know we're getting ready to wind down, as long as you are prepared for the conversation, don't be afraid to have it. People in the cybersecurity um, realm love people who are passionate and proactive about what they are trying to <clears throat> learn. They welcome that inside of the community because it inherently makes us all better. Yes, preparation, preparation, preparation. Right. Before we close out, I wanted to give either Trevor, Sheree, or Ebony an opportunity. And Sheldon, uh, you just uh, you recently joined, I think. But any one of you guys an opportunity to ask a question because I've got a I've got a couple things I want to ask Eric that is germane to his and mine relationship over <laughs> near, nearly thirty years. But Sheree, 
Ebony, um, Sheldon, I don't have a question, but this has been very thoughtful. Thank you. <laughs> Come back again. Trevor, Same uh, Professor. Hey, Sheldon, what's up, buddy? Same here. Uh, definitely wealth of knowledge. Thank you, uh, Mr. Perminter. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to speaking with more. Is it okay for us to link with you in LinkedIn? I put it, yeah. I, I put, I I put, put LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And Is that I your telephone put number? My, I just put my mobile. <laughs> just saw it. And <laughs> I just put my private email. You Thank can you, reach me. Yeah, I appreciate it. You. See that? That's all I ask is just keep that amongst us friends. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and be prepared for the conversation. I can Absolutely. tell you that. I can tell you be prepared for the conversation. It's not going to be a lot of riffraff over there with Eric. I can no, tell you. It's that. straight talk. I see Cherie, and real quick, I see her fired one off. Uh, I'm a web developer trying to figure out where to go. Web developers, I inherently encourage you to look at application security and uh, direct yourself to the security innovations platform uh, that was referenced earlier in the call, Shuri. So, so Mr. Permenter. Yes, sir. What's, what's next? For me? Eric Permenter, yeah. Ah, uh, great question. So I talked about paying it forward earlier. Um, as an entrepreneur, you wanna see other, you wanna see other entrepreneurs enter the field and for me uh, I'm just going to spend time grooming other entrepreneurs um, uh, coaching mentoring watching folks bloom trying to find ways to help them experience the you know the joy that I had uh, I, I've had the pleasure of experiencing throughout my my cybersecurity career and and look this is not you know this isn't a Eric and Dave pat one another on the back scenario. I'm telling you all this for a reason. Um, I've had the pleasure of having folks like David by my side throughout this career as part of my network so that I can lean on and, and be corrected and um, uh, you know a number of others, right? Um, oh, I see ways to connect, I think I'm not, not taking, yeah, it's my, Ebony and my LinkedIn profile is secure, I, I should have. Here's what I'll do, Dave. Just give me everybody's name, and I'll make sure I link out to to everyone else. You need okay. It's it's secure. Um. Anyway, um. Uh, at the end of the day, that's where I'm going to be spending my time, really trying to help folks hone out their ideas and entrepreneurial flair, and supporting them where I can. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. How about um, yourself? Eric, What's next with you, man? No. Oh, we're going to talk. That's for sure. I know. I know. Right. You know that. You, we're going to talk. I swear to God, we're going to talk. I mean, for sure. Eric and I used to always talk about being a rat with only one hole to climb in and out of. We always said that that is just not a good, smart rat. Rats aren't stupid. They know how to climb in and out of three or four different holes. Um, Eric, <clears throat> um, do you have a question that you would ask any and all of these folks. Do you have yes. a question for them? Yes. yes. Does everyone have a plan? Oh my God. Oh my God, the word. The word, the word, Ted. plan. And, and my follow on question to that would be do you have a plan B? Right. And that's really it. If you, in, 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 to put it in very specific terms, there's companies out there that are you know, building cybersecurity career paths, right, for uh, new hires inside of their company so that they have a plan to excel through the cybersecurity field. So if companies are doing it, you want to make sure that you, you know, you're doing it yourself. And that serenity is going to be what's going to get you to being that entrepreneur. Uh, that lamb rock is what's going to get you to shift from being that developer to going into application security, right? And, and a number of other things. So you got to have a plan. Um, and so that would be my first two questions for folks, actually. Thank you. Thank you. I'm putting, listen, guys, I'm putting my um, email, P-K-L-Y-N, into the um, chat box. Send me at that email your contact information so I could pass it on to Eric. Eric, I mean, that's the or, public and, one. Yeah, you can yeah, use that one as a as a public one as well. Try that yeah. one as well. All right. Yeah. There you go. Eric, yeah. man, I don't know how to thank you. 
It's just been an, it's just been as it always has been for years. An awesome opportunity and experience. It really has been. Uh, David, thank you. It was far more enjoyable than I ever imagined. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. I thought you was gonna bust my chops a lot, man. So <laughs> I appreciate man, it. You've grown and matured, right? Maturation is part of the whole process. And we've seen thank you, we've sincerely. all developed, man. And you know, the past is what the past is a great um, it's a great inspiration for what to what happens in the future. Use it yeah. that way every time. Hey, Trevor, Professor Chandler, man, you looking more professorial than ever. <laughs> How are you? And so I know if you did you want to did you want to say anything to Eric before? Because I saw you come off of off, 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 uh, mute there. Yes, sir. Uh, I um at the risk of sounding like uh, 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 coming across like a know-it-all, it's not. It's not uh, that, uh, that's not the reason that I don't have uh, any questions uh, or a question or questions. But uh, I, let me just say um, uh, in the uh, uh, vernacular of brother Les Brown, mm. stay hungry, mm -hmm. folks. Mm. I didn't say hungry, I said hungry. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities. And that's plural, that are chasing you. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't hear anyone say uh, anything about I've been searching for opportunities or, or an opportunity and I've not been able to locate. I'm glad I didn't hear that. At least if I did hear it, uh, maybe uh, I just uh, 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 closed my ears and didn't even realize I closed my ears, but anyway, uh, the, the, there's so, so many opportunities uh, yeah. uh, in the cybersecurity space and, and uh, the resources to get prepared for uh, the opportunities. Oh my goodness, there, there's more resources available than you have time to use. Um, and uh, just let me just say this final thing. Uh, if you uh, see an opportunity, see an opportunity uh, or something that interests you and you don't feel that uh, you necessarily have the credentials or the experience, et cetera, uh, that's in that uh, published opportunity, go for it anyway. So the, 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 the worst thing that can happen for those of you without an ego, but for the worst thing that can happen is you are going to learn something. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and in, the, in the words of Nelson Mandela, there are only uh, uh, wins and learning. There are right. no failures. Right. Go, uh, 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 make, make an attempt at it. You never know uh, uh, an opportunity that may be created for you because the individual has seen that you're approaching may see something in your profile that they more, may want to create an opportunity for. And you also never know who that individual knows. Okay, let me find the off button here because. Uh, <laughs> no, that it, it, for, for, what, what was, who, who was that? That was Trevor? There yes. he goes. Professor, is it? Do I address you as Professor Chandler? Yes, I'm an educator in higher ed. Uh, yeah. that, that 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 professor title is just uh, something that uh, I slap on on myself. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate that, Professor. So, so you, I, I love that, and and I'm not going to drag this out, but here's here's where that ties back to ICMCP. If you all have not already gone and completed your competency core profile, has everyone done that yet? If you have not, go complete your competency core profile. What that does is create basically a career path for what you want to go down. So Serenity, you asked me how I wanted to, you know, do you go down? Uh, oh, no, someone had mentioned that they wanted to eventually be a CISO. You literally could put your current job description in, 
point to where you want to go and it's going to chart the courses and everything else that you need to take to get there to get there to be that 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 CEO. So spot on professor, I appreciate you part, the, uh, you know providing us with those words of words of wisdom I, I, and I, I sincerely appreciate you, you, you chiming in there sir. Well, thank you for tolerating me. Oh hey. please. <laughs> Professor Chandler, man, thank you very much. You know, you've been a great resource to me and other folks in the Houston area. So I thank you very much for joining today. I hope you come back again. I hope you come back and bring some more friends with you. Okay. Well, I'm 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 going to be back. The, the only the only way I'm not is that uh, I am in uh, ICU or <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in my final destination. You you know. <laughs> 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 Thanks very much. Hey, Eric, man, uh, again, I really can't um, thank you enough for spending the time. I know, you, you know, even as the chairman, having this viewpoint of, of this, this, this vision of the landscape, you're still aggressive. You're still, as, Ch as Professor Chandler said, hungry, and you're out there moving and shaking with your business, and we really appreciate you coming today and speaking to us. Um, I was going to ask you if you have a joke, but I know... <laughs> I know Eric. He's not the joke. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. But but I, but I, but here's the deal. I've I've started to connect with a couple of folks. Uh, Ebony, thank you for sending the uh, the LinkedIn invite. By the way, use the second email address that I sent to you all. There's a little way in which you can unsecure that one. So um, use that one. We'll connect. And for anyone that has a pretty cool cybersecurity joke, you can share it with me when we connect. Maybe I'll learn it and I'll be able to use it next time, Dave. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate everyone's uh, involvement, engagement, and even coming off mute and speaking. Uh, uh, Professor Chandler, Jason, Serenity, Sheldon, good to see you again, my brother. Um, uh, Carlos, of course, Lamb Rock, uh, 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 Janice, who I think left, or oh, Janice is still here, Cherie, Ebony, um, Lewis, Lewis Pate. Yeah. I, I, I text you, Lewis Pate, <laughs> maybe have a call. But thank you, thank you all. And Eric, again, one love. Thank you all. Thank you all, sincerely. Be well. Be well. All right. Be safe and be well, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed thank it, you. really. Thank you all. Thanks.